Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. Hope you're all doing well. Very excited to start the series that we're doing today. Uh, I'm going to try and keep it to a reasonable number of videos, but you know me, it might be a, a few shorter ones. We are going to be finishing this guitar in a beautiful vintage finish from Oxford Supply. <laughs> you guys have seen me talk about Oxford Supply before. You know they're basically my favorite finishing company. Um, they do vintage lacquers and they've got a new vintage formula clear that crackles really easily. It, it checks up really nice. That's what we're going to use. Now, I was tempted to make this like they're a Canadian company. They ship internationally, mind you. I was tempted to make this like a Canadian themed video and use a Canadian kit from um, Precision Guitar Kits or Solo. You guys know I get most of my guitar kits from Solo. I really like their stuff. But I have this body kicking around and it is pretty well vintage. <laughs> it's got a vintage style neck with the skunk stripe and everything. This is from Music Lily. I did the unboxing of this ages ago and then something weird happened with Music Lily and I couldn't really get a hold of them and it seemed like their stuff wasn't available anymore. I think you can find their stuff in the Amazon link in the description. Um, but if not, Solo Music Gear, link in the description. It's an affiliate link, they both are. So if you're trying to help me out and you wanna support the channel, uh, feel free to get your stuff through there. If not, you can get it elsewhere too, of course. And then the Oxford Supply, awesome stuff. Really excited about this. Uh, their kit, which we're going to be using for this video, is available at their website in the description if you want to let them know I sent you. Much appreciated. Or again, through the affiliate link uh, at Solo Music Gear, they actually carry Oxford Supply, which is a good call on their part. So what I've got here is a Music Lily Strat body and neck. We're not going to paint the neck. I'm going to oil it at some point. Um, I don't really like painted necks. I don't like glossy necks. I like a nice satin or oil finish. So for that, we're gonna use a different finish entirely. That's gonna be the Maximum Guitar Works oils. You guys have seen me use those. They're awesome, they feel great. That's what's getting used on this neck. Uh, for the body, we're gonna go with a vintage nitrocellulose finish using exclusively the Oxford Supply stuff. So I was looking around to see if there are any cracks or anything in here. Um, there are some glue lines, but they're not cracks. So I don't think there's anything that needs to be repaired per se. If there was, I would use my Star Bond uh, super glue for that probably. Um, you guys know I've got a discount code, 15%, if you wanna check that out and go 15 is the code. Um, but sorry, there's, <laughs> I try to tell people where I get my stuff. I have affiliate links for a lot of this stuff. You, you can find great stuff elsewhere as well, but this is what I use and I hope it's not too annoying me telling you. Uh, anyway, I don't think I need to repair anything. So this thing's pretty well machined. It's actually not too bad in terms of sanding too, but there are a few edges that I wanna ease and I wanna make sure that it's sanded adequately for me to start. Then I'm gonna hook it up to my new spray rig. You'll hear about that too, and we'll get started. I think this is gonna be this paint job is gonna go more smoothly than most of the ones that you've seen me do. It's gonna be very easy to follow along. That's my, my purpose with this one. It's using a finishing kit, which makes it even easier because you don't have to select your materials. Um, yeah, it's, this is meant to be a straightforward, easy thing that you can follow and get a nice vintage finish. So let's get started. That's enough talking for now. I'm gonna get this guy sanded down and then we're gonna head over to the shop and get some sealer on it and go from there. Let's get after it. Okay, I'm going to start with getting this sanded to 220 and then 320 grit. I'm going to use a combination of my orbital sander and my huge Duroblock block sander here. But something important, I'm doing it this way for speed and convenience because I have very limited time available to me today. Um, the kit, the finishing kit, you will see comes with everything you need. So it comes with the sandpaper. All you need is a little block to use it. You do not need this. You do not need this. In fact, I'm kind of going outside of the confines of the kit just because I have this stuff available and I want to do it quickly. The sandpaper's all in there. You don't need this stuff. I'm doing it go fast. We're going to go fast and then we'll move on to using the kit. Let's get after it. Please note if you're relatively new to sanding, um, one, start this just right on here. When you start, don't start it in the air because if you put it down, you can leave swirl marks. Also, hand sanding, safer, easier. This is faster, which is why I'm doing it. 
Um, but just using what comes in the kit is the safer problem or way of doing it. Also, I'm starting at 220 and then moving it up to 320 because of how smooth this is. But if you're starting with a rougher body, you actually want to start at like 120, then go 150, then 220 or 180, even then 220, then 320. Don't jump right to 220. That's not how you're supposed to do it. And you don't, don't just jump from 120 all the way to 320. Then you'll leave scratches that the 320 won't take out. Work your way through the grits. You will not regret it. See, this is the line that I want to ease slightly. There's nothing wrong with this. This is a vintage type of cut, but I just like it smoothed out a little. Let's make sure I'm not messing up any of my previous sanding before I get going on this. I'm pretty... Uh, I'm a little frugal about how I do this, so I just use, this is literally just like a shower mat, you know, for, for the bathroom. Don't worry, I didn't steal the one that my wife put in the bathroom. Here's a cool little item I picked up off Amazon, the soft block, flexible sanding block. Great for this sort of thing. Um, you know, this isn't the right sandpaper for it really, but for the purpose of this little area, it won't be a problem. Contours nicely to what I'm working on. Now be careful. Uh, the adhesive paper that I use for this is awesome, but it's not good for these. It'll actually stick and like rip off some of the rubber. but I use this thing all the time on, on guitars. Just follows the curve. What else can it do? Well, all of this. Not quite small enough to get into these curves. Uh, frankly, I just usually end up go giving those a quick sanding by hand or putting my fingers in there and pulling a strip of paper through is also a really good way to do it. But yeah, this is pretty much ready now. It doesn't look like it's gonna need any filler. So we'll get to the shop, get this cleaned off, and uh, get started with Oxford's sanding sealer. <sighs> we're gonna be moving on to the fun part pretty quick here. Let's go. All right, guys, we're here at the shop now. We've got everything we need. We've got our Oxford merch. We've got our deluxe finishing kit, metallic in vintage, and the kit's got everything we need in it. And we've got our spin twist spray rig here so that we can get started on the spraying part. So this is sanded. I haven't cleaned it yet. The kit has a tack cloth for that. The kit also has oil-based grain filler. It's the natural color in this kit because you're putting an opaque finish over it. Don't need it for this one. This body does not require a grain fill, so we can skip that step. Next up is the sanding sealer. Then we've got the white primer. You don't necessarily need to use both. I generally don't use both sanding sealer and primer, but it depends on the finish. And this is a metallic. I wanna make sure I get a nice smooth base so I'm gonna hit this thing with a couple coats of sanding sealer today. We're gonna to sand that back. We're gonna hit it with some white green filler and then we're gonna move on to our color. First things first though, let's get this guy cleaned off and loaded up onto here. In fact, I'm gonna do that in the opposite order, but I will get this opened up now that I've started. We'll get this uh, mount attached here. Now there are a couple different ways you can do this. You can fire a couple screws through the center here or these bolts, these holes are basically perfect for your average 
strat or tele alignment. So I'm actually just gonna use those and I'm gonna put two screws right through the holes that are already in the body. For the neck, I've got the screws that came with the rig, two different sizes, two for the center, the short ones, or the longer ones to go into those holes. So I'm gonna start with that. And then I recommend, if you're doing this, that you use something to cover the tips of your screws um, before you start spraying. I'm simply gonna put a piece of tape over this whole section. That's how I do it. So let's get those put in. Do I have a handy screwdriver here or do I need to get one? What a silly thing not to have in your toolbox. <clears throat> All right, sorry, voice has been acting up a bit lately. I think it's because I have a small child and I have to make high-pitched noises at it for its own amusement sometimes. So getting this screwed in, using a couple of the longer screws, like I said, and putting them right into the screw holes that are already in the body. This is gonna make this so much easier. So having the Oxford kit is really gonna make this process easy and having the spin twist spray rig that I'm gonna be using, which is why I'm bolting this on, is gonna make it even easier. This is actually my first time using the spray rig. So you guys are gonna see the, uh, the maiden voyage here. Very excited for that. Uh, let's get the taping done. First. So pretty straightforward. Just gonna put a piece of tape right over this entire section so it doesn't get really, really messy. I'm gonna use a small piece of tape around the edge just so there's less to clean up after. So around the edge of the neck pocket because the neck on this one fits pretty well. I don't want to put a whole bunch of paint in the neck pocket and then have to clean it up. So we'll get that kind of generally taped off. And then ordinarily, you would at least consider taping off your cavities. In this case, I'm not gonna bother because I'm going to be either doing a copper tape on them or a, uh, a paint that's conductive. So it really doesn't matter. There's no reason for me to bother taping those off. Now this has a hole in it for you to hang this thing if you want to, to dry and whatnot. But I have, and you might be able to see it in the back there, I have a rig from Spin Twist Spray Rig that allows me to just stick this on it to dry. So I don't need to worry about that. So I am also, just to keep this clean, gonna go ahead and tape off the, uh, the post itself here. Seems like a good idea. I don't know. Maybe not, but I'm doing it anyway. Okay, there we have it. So the spray rig itself is currently set up right in the booth area here. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean this off real quick with the tack cloth. I'm gonna make sure that this is well open because I intend to put it back in here after. And then I'm gonna go toss this thing directly onto the spray rig so it doesn't touch anything else. So I don't have to worry about it getting dusty again because this is a shop, all right? It's not, it's dusty. It's a dusty place is what it is. You don't need a tack cloth. Um, you can just kind of clean this off with wax and grease remover or something like that, or your hand in a vacuum, but the kit comes with one. So why not? It comes right in there, done. All right, let's get this loaded up and start spraying. All right, first things first here, guys. Shake your cans well, protect yourself with a respirator. I'm lucky enough to have a pull booth here, so I'm mostly spraying directly toward that. Um, I never used to be able to spray exclusively toward the booth, but now I can because I've got this spin twist spray paint rig. As I'm getting more used to it, I'm getting better at focusing on spraying toward the booth when I actually paint. For this video, I'm spraying a little bit toward the camera, partially because it helps you see what I'm doing, and partially because I just didn't think to do it properly. Anyway, if you've been watching me for a while, you know this already, always do the edges first, or at least that's what I do, and I do them from two different angles, one from the top, one from the bottom. Then I come in and do my 50% overlap on the front and the back. You can see how smoothly this process is going with this spray rig, and you can also see you know, how well this can is spraying. It's got the fan cap, which is really nice. 
uh, easy to get that 50% overlap. The Oxford cans are really good for this. So this is the transparent sanding sealer. I'm going to do three or four coats of this total. Uh, I'm going to start with two of them that I'll film here for you. After I do my coats, I always kind of check them. And then, uh, yeah, I clear my can. That's what I'm doing by holding it upside down and spraying until just clear gas comes out. That helps keep the nozzles clear. And then I shake it again when it's time to spray again, and I'm good to go. I only wait about five minutes here. It's nice and warm in the booth, and uh, this stuff dries to the touch almost immediately. So second coat coming through here. Again, one from the back, one from the front. I'm getting better already on my second coat at spraying at the booth. This setup, particularly the Spin Twist spray paint rig, really helps you kind of eliminate a little bit of the mess and, and keep it localized to one direction. Alright, that's it guys. You can see me finish this coat. I hope you enjoyed the video. It's the first in the series, so there will be more coming out. If you did like it, please feel free to give it a thumbs up. It really helps me out if you do that. And remember to subscribe if you haven't already so you can see the rest of the series. I'm going to reiterate, this is a full kit from Oxford, so you don't have to pick anything if you, if you grab one of these. And uh, yeah, go check them out in one of the links below. Again, hope you enjoyed. Have a good one, and I will see you next time.